There we go. All right, I'm a superstar. Um, basically, if you had the five skin TV, the women, they were the ones that cured the skins. Okay, and so who do you think was put in charge of the teepee? The women. So guys, if you weren't treating your wife correctly and she wanted out of your relationship, you'd come back from the hunt and your teepee would be gone. Oh, wow. Divorce, hey, 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 high plain style. Now, why did they give their women so much power? <clears throat> Oh, and by the way, guys, in the U.S. history, territories out in the West gave women the right to vote much earlier than places like New York, uh, Massachusetts. Why would they be doing that out in the West? What are they trying to do? Why would I let the woman own the teepee? Why do bars have ladies' nights? They want to bring the woman in. They want to keep the women happy. Now, why do you want to keep the women happy? What do women do? In the societal things. All besides that, there are some... I don't know if y'all know this, but I can't have kids. I'm a man. Men can't have kids. <laughs> women are the ones that actually give birth to babies. Okay? So, guys... They need the women, so you've got to keep the women happy. How do they do that? By expanding their uh, roles of responsibility. Now, the guys that don't have anything at all are the Southwestern culture. These are the ones that live uh, out in Arizona and New Mexico. That, guys, it rains less than eight hundredths of an inch of rain a year. Now, through uh, drip irrigation, they were able to get some crops done, like uh, the uh, corn, but it's very tough life. For housing, they lived in places like Chaco Can Oh, well, their housing was simple, made of adobe, everything like that, uh, using ladders to get in. There's a trade center in Chaco Canyon. There's one at Pueblo Benito. Y'all get out of here at 35 or 40. Y'all get out of here at 40. 40, 40. Now, the crazy thing about these, and you see these big circles that are like right there and there. Not so much back there, that's storage. And there's some that are here. Those are called kivas. Basically what it was is you'd go, you'd, uh, go to one of those places, you'd take a ladder to get up on the roof. There'd be all these other guys there. You then, uh, there's an opening in the center of the kiva. You'd go down that one. There's a little fire in there with smoke coming out. You take some mescaline or peyote, which is a hallucinogenic uh, plant. Uh, so you'd have visions and you'd have what was known as a vision quest, where you'd meet with the god, your spirit animal, and stuff like that. Meanwhile, all these guys are dancing on the roof. So it must sound like a you know, thunderous noise in there. Um, but then, like, uh, Chaco Canyon was there 200 years, and then one day, they just abandoned it. Same thing with Pueblo Benito. We have no idea why. And guys, they died out well before the Europeans got here. Why did they do that? Ah, uh, the old world outreach. Oh, before we get to this, uh, guys, I'll, well, I'll just go ahead and tell you here and everybody will still write down what they're writing down. Everything I told you about people coming over uh, on the Varenia might be total horse hockey. Why? Because in the 1940s, there was a guy named Thor Kirkendall. He had been a, re a reconnaissance pilot for the Allies against the Nazis during World War II. And after the war, he noticed that some of the uh, cultural artifacts of Polynesia looked the same as the cultural artifacts of South America. So what he did was he built something called the Contiki, which was a huge vessel that would have been like what the Polynesians had. And he made sure he had only what the Polynesians would have had on his boat. He didn't have a radio, any mark conveniences. And basically he sailed that boat from the islands of Polynesia to the shore of South America. So he said basically that whole thing about Berenia is horse hockey, and instead of coming from the north down, actually they came from the south up. And what's another interesting thing? You know how we talk about people coming over here from Asia? Well, guys, the arrowheads that most of the Plains Indians, I mean, 
most of the Native Americans in America used more resembled the arrowheads in Spain than the arrowheads from Asia. <laughs> oh, that's so weird, Professor Galloway. Oh. Then we get to the next thing, which is old world outreach. Now we get into this, and we start to get into the problem of myth. Or who are the people that came here first? You know, there's some people who say, oh, it was the Mayans. No, it was the Carthaginians. Oh, the Greeks. Uh, no, it was Atlantis was over here. Some people say Rome. Uh, some people say that America was visited by the lost tribes of Israel. I remember reading this his history journal. This guy showed pictures of these weather-beaten rocks. And no, look, they're Hebrew runes. Um, uh, some people have talked about St. Brennan of Ireland who came over here. Guys, believe what you want to believe. I don't, this is all horse hockey because we're not going to pay attention to those. Who are we going to pay attention to? We're going to pay attention to the people that came over here and actually made a change. Stay. Now, European outreach in the age of exploration. Now, people in Europe had wanted to come over here. They just didn't have the technology yet. Kind of like before 1969, people wanted to go and land on the moon. They just didn't have the technology yet. And you want to hear something that's really going to blow your mind? All the electronics that were on the lunar module that got us to the moon basically would be the same as the electronics in a pocket calculator. Oh man! Now guys, okay, so we get up to the troubled beginnings, the Vikings. Uh, basically, uh, the Vikings really rose as an empire from 700 to 1100. After that, their empire kind of fell apart. But what was the technology they had? They had boats, really long boats, that were called long boats, that basically could uh, go survive a deep sea voyage and go right into the shore, because they had kind of shallow uh, keels. Now, how could they do that? Once again, the longer you made your boat, the more stable it would be. Now, uh, one exploration, the role of nature, in 1860, a boat was blown off course, and they thought they found a place called Iceland. So after a few years, they go and they uh, discover Iceland, claiming it for themselves. Uh, then a guy by the name of Eric the Red, he hears of another ship that was blown off course, finding land, he goes and he sets up settlements in Greenland. Now guys, he's a real estate guy. Before Eric the Red, um, Iceland didn't have a name. He's the guy who named Iceland, Iceland. And he named Greenland, Greenland. Now guys, why do you think he gave them those names? To fool other people. Why? So that no one else would come and like, conquer it or whatever? No, you're a real estate guy. You're making your money by selling land. Most of the land in Iceland's already sold. You're getting money by selling land in Greenland. Well, I'll ask you. Do you want to live in the land of ice? Ooh, or do you want to live in the land of green? Even though Iceland is much greener than Greenland is. But it's a real estate trick. It's like people like building... I love these things. they got them all over Plano. they got them out here in Rockwall, too. Those housing associations that all have natural names. Like the deer at Havens Creek or something like that. Ooh, I wouldn't live there. It's right next to the city dump. Oh, but it sounds so pretty. Well, needless to say, time passes on and uh, people are building up settlements here in Greenland when nature plays its role again and blows another ship, citing that there's land even further west. A uh, longtime descendant of uh, Eric the Red does anybody know what his name was? He was Eric's son. Turn over a new... Nobody here has heard of Leif Erikson? <laughs> Leif Erikson, but see, this was way back down, so Eric was like his granddad. Anyway, he discovers a new world over here, 
He starts a settlement that you can still find today called Lanzo Meadow. That guys that they had like blacksmiths that were there, they brought over a lot of people and they established it in uh, 1001 and they said we're going to be right back. And meanwhile they leave and they're planning to come back, but this is right when the Viking clan is fighting against the clan, everything's going dark. So they're not able to make it back for another 13 years. When they do finally get back, the colony's totally abandoned. Um, but we do know that for that little time that they were there, they did uh, change the balance of native power. Y'all don't like me anymore. You're packing up your stuff. Well, I'm going to turn off my...